Hello, my name is David Malin, and I'm the instructor for Computer Science E1, Understanding Computers and the Internet at Harvard University's Extension School. You're watching one of our videos of the week. For more such videos or information about this course, visit us on the web at computerscience1.org. Enjoy the show. Hello, I'm Dan Armendaris, a TF for Computer Science E1. You're watching one of our videos of the week. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about XHTML. Have you ever been to a web page and wondered how that web page is formed? Well, it's with the standard known as XHTML. Web designers use a set of predefined code that they know that browsers will understand and interpret to create the page that you see. So let's take a look at an example. On my computer here, I have a web page up for W3 schools. So if you right click the page and go down to view page source, what you will get is a window that pops up with the XHTML or the HTML of that particular page. So it may look like Greek for now, but let's go ahead and break it down a little bit so that we can understand what is going on. All XHTML documents share a fundamental structure. First, it has the DTD or the document type declaration. Next, it has the elements of the page. These form the structure of the page and the elements that you see on it, such as the links, the images, and the text. The elements can then be further categorized into two parts. First is the head elements, and next is the body. The body elements are actually the elements that you see on the page, and the head defines certain features of the page. For example, the title that you see along the top bar of your web, of your web browser is defined by an element in the head. So let's take a look at some elements of a web page, better known as tags. Here we can see a sample tag that I have written out. First, there is an angle bracket. This defines the beginning of a tag. Next is an element name, followed by its attribute, equal sign, that in quotes the attribute values, and then another angle bracket to close the tag. Followed by that is content, another angle bracket, a slash, and then finally, the element name. So what do these tags do? I suppose the best example might be to modify text so that it becomes a link. So right here, I have an example of a tag for a link. This link, in particular, goes to the Harvard University website. We use, in order to create links, an anchor tag. So I have my angle bracket, then the element name, which in this case is an A, then the attribute, href, and then we tell what the attribute value is. So in this case, you can see that the reference for this link is http colon double slash www.harvard.edu. Now, the contents of the tag, Harvard University, will show up as the blue underlined link that we're accustomed to. The way that the computer knows that the link is finished to stop underlining uh, the text is to have the end tag here with the slash and the element name. So here, let's break it down a little bit. The start tag is the entirety of the first part of the tag before the content. So the a, href, http, etc. The element name in this case is a. This is an anchor tag. The attribute is href or the http reference. The attribute value is http colon double slash www.harvard.edu. The content, like I mentioned, is Harvard University, and the end tag is the slash a encapsulated in the, in the angled brackets. Now, a web page can quickly rack up a number of tags. So in order to make sure that web pages are properly formed, there are set rules in order to make sure that they are well-formed and valid. So let's take a look at the well-formed well rules. First, the elements must be properly nested. So let's say that I want to bold a link, for example. That means you'll have to use two elements in a row. First, you'll have to tell the computer to make the text bold, and then you'll have to tell the computer to make that bolded text into a link. So first, let's make some text bold. This is some text. We must encapsulate this in the strong tag. Now by doing this, 
what we're doing is telling the computer to bold this particular text. Now, in order to make this bold text into a link, we add the anchor tag. So in this case, I'm making a link to Google. Now, what you may notice is that in this particular case, on the inside, the inside tags are the strong tags, and the outside tags are the anchor tags. It would not be well formed if I close the anchor tag before I close the strong tag. This is what it means to be properly nested. You must close the most recent tag first before you can close an outside tag. The next rule in well-formedness is that elements must have a start tag and an end tag. So in the cases that we've shown so far, they all do. The anchor tag has a start tag and an end tag, and the strong element has a start tag and an end tag. The last rule in well-formedness is that attribute values must be enclosed in quotation marks. So next, let's talk about validity. Not only do all of the elements and all of the attributes have to be lowercase, but the page should be well-formed and it should conform to the document type declaration that you've defined. Now, there's an easy way to tell if your web page is valid, and that is to go to the website validator.w3.org. You can enter in the URL of your web page, or you can upload a particular web page, and it will tell you whether or not your code is valid. So if you'd like to learn more tags to insert into your web page, I recommend the XHTML tag reference page from the W3 Schools. That URL is www.w3schools.com slash xhtml slash xhtml underscore reference dot ASP. Well, this has been a video of the week. My name is Dan Armendaris. Thank you very much for watching. All XHTML documents share a fundamental structure. First, it has a, oh, are you kidding me? I'm still on IM? Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Hmm. <laughs> OK, hold on. BRB. <laughs> now, if you need some further help with tags, for example, if you want to learn more tags and what they do, then I recommend the XHTML tag reference from the W3 schools. That particular web page is http colon double slash www.w3schools.org. Oh, no. Crap. OK. That URL is www.w3schools.com slash xhtml slash slash xhtml reference. Oh, no. Underscore reference. <sighs> Well, this has been a video of the week. I, my name is Dan Armendaris. Thank you very much for watching. No, no, no. <laughs>